No, I haven't got any slides. Oh. I'm quite boring, folks, I'm afraid. <laughs> You've only got me. Yeah. And, the <laughs> and the other thing is, I've actually surplus to requirements because Josh's talk, Susan Fay's talk, and now Mar um, Mark's talk, it's like, yeah, everything I was going to mention has actually been mentioned. So, yep, yeah, just go have 20 minutes tea break. <laughs> Okay, now the clock is already ticking and we know that Liz has a taser so that if I go over, she will taser me. So I'm going to get my shit together and I'm going to start. Okay, we are the universe informing itself from a relative viewpoint. Those are the words of Nassim Haramein, who's a quantum physicist. And the reason I started with those words is, as you can imagine, when I found out I was doing this talk, and I've been so excited, um, there were 1,100 different iterations of what I could say. But about six weeks ago, as usual, I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning to do the talk. Why it has to be 4 o'clock in the morning, I do not know, but yeah, woo, hello, I'm awake again. And this time, the words were go big or go home, speak your truth. And it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I've been told. Yeah. And that's when I knew that I had to start with that sentence. Because that's one very elegant sentence in itself says how the universe works and why we are here. And when I first heard it, it was what I call a tingle tangle tongle moment. And it means like you get that shiver down your spine, you go, oh yes, this is resonating. So that's where I decided to start. Now, the other bit was, you know, speak your truth. Well, as the old T-shirt says, my experience is my truth. And the thing is, it's my truth. I don't expect it to be your truth. So if something I say doesn't resonate with you, leave it on the chair as you walk out the door. No problem at all, okay? I'm not here to convince you of anything. And the other thing about my truth is I'm not attached to it. We have an amazing gathering of people, both speakers and audience here. And if any of you should say something to me that makes me go, oh, hello, that's a bit interesting, I'm really happy to leave an old paradigm behind and step into a new. The words of I know, to me, shut the door on learning. Because if you know, why do you need to know more? I don't know are three very powerful words because you're always open to new information. So as it says on the box, my name is Cathy Price, and my work is called Point of Balance. And I've been working with energy now, um, both working and studying, for about 20 years. And seven years ago, I realized I didn't need to be a practitioner of something anymore. I was gonna step into me, Cathy Price, with all of my experience. And what I'd realized over my working years was that I believe every system from a unicellular organism up to the earth, and I believe beyond, wants to be in balance. And the balance is about the place of ease, the place of optimum function. And it's not a fixed point, it's a dynamic state of being. Because as we change, so that point will change. What we need to do to come back to balance will change. We've heard so many speakers talking the same sort of thing. We're all saying the same thing, but from a slightly different perspective. So when we look at a human being, we have physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and for me, most importantly, energetic balance, because that's where I work. So my work consists of three elements. It's energy, connection, and intention. Looking at the energy side first, an atom is said to be the basic building block of matter. But when you look at an atom, there's no crystalline structure. It's 99.9999999% space. Within that space, you have vibrating energy. So according to who you talk to, a person it consists of between 50 and 100 trillion cells. But if we just take one of those cells, those cells, are, that's one cell, is made of molecules. And molecules are made of atoms. Atom is energy. Ergo, we are energy. We cannot get away from it. 
we are energetic beings. So all of the time, we have energy going in and out of ourselves. We, we send energy out and we receive energy back. But where does that happen? It happens in what we call the field. Now, I've been a beef and sheep farmer for 30 years, and I'm not talking about the green, green grass at home. No, what we're looking at is a matrix of really um, dense energy that connects us from the most inside proton of our body to the furthest most galaxy of the universe that we've yet to discover. That is a continuous matrix. We are continually connected to it. That is the matrix that connects us to the world around us. It connects us to each other. It connects us to the horse. It connects us, it connects us to nature. So that's the connection part that I use. And the next part is the intention part. Now, the two most common um, questions I get asked are how do you know, say, say, say Sheila from Australia gets in touch and she says, um, will you work with my horse? In essence, that's all I need. I don't need any more information at all because I work with the intention of the person. Who, when, whoever gets in touch with me, whether they are asking me to work with their horse, their dog, you know, themselves or a loved one, their intention is on one particular system. So someone could say here, will you work with my dog? I can work with that dog because your intention becomes my intention. So I need know nothing else about it. So that's how I direct wherever the person may be. Even if they've got 10 black horses in one field all called Skippy, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they will have this sort of intention on one of those horses and that's what I work with. And then the other side of intention, <laughs> Now, this is what I call my working hypothesis, okay? Because I, you know, have not yet proved this, and I don't think science has. And I always say that if I could win the lottery, if I won the lottery, um, I would love to do some really robust scientific um, investigation into how this works. My one problem is I don't do the lottery, so you know, that's out the window. <laughs> but it's my, as I said, working hypothesis is this. The field is full of en energy, and that energy is not organized. It's random, okay? It's called entropy. I believe when I work, I bring order to the field. It, the, you know, the field is the energy. Energy is information. So an analogy I use um, is that, say a system at an energetic level, so what we're talking about here is that every system at an energetic level knows what it needs to come back into balance where balance is health, okay? And the only healer ever, ever, ever is the system itself. Nothing and nobody, no, no drug, no you know, energetic person, whatever, can make a system move back into balance. If they could, we'd know all about it and that's all we'd need. The only healer is the system itself. So the system at an energetic level knows what it needs. But if you think of the entropy within the, the um, field, all of the energy is random flying around. Sometimes it might be a bit difficult to find what it needs. So that's where I can come in and I can make no guarantees, but I bring order to the field. So I don't know here in America if you have these things called ball pits, the kids can jump in. Yeah, great, I don't have to describe it. So if you imagine there's four different colored balls and they're all jumbled up in this pit and it could be thousands of balls in there. And so if the system, if you imagine that's the energy of the universe, that's the field, and the system knows it knows, needs a certain number of colors of each, you know, a certain number of balls of each color, it can be difficult for the system to find what it needs. However, if I come along and bring order and condition the field, it's like putting the balls in different color, you know, each color in a different box. It just makes it easier to find it. So that's what I call conditioning the field. And my intention is always when I do the sessions, I'm conditioning the field for the system I'm working with. So how does this relate to the title? Understanding the power and unique magnificence. And I can never say that. Why I put that in the title, I don't know. <laughs> that is you. Especially when your mouth's dry. Um, for me, we all have an innate power. And when I say innate, you are born with it, nobody gives it to you. And for me, the power is to connect, to heal, to create, and to find purpose. Those are four major elements. I believe there's more as well, but that's what I'm going to look at today. 
and it's innate. You have to think about how did humanity get to here if they didn't have these powers? So looking at connection, as I have already said, you're innately connected. We are energy. We are constantly having a conversation with the field, in and out. And for me, that's how the indigenous people, they, that's how they lived. That's how they found water. That's how they found their prey. That's how they found the plants in the jungle. That's their connection to the field. And they utilized it. But we have that connection still. The trouble is, as a Western society, and practically every speaker has spoken about this, we have gone into sympathetic. We've closed down. And the way we connect to the field is through the heart, the gut, and the pelvic bowl. When that opens up, that's when we connect. That's when we can find the information. And the trouble is we're all in our head. And as Philip Shepard says in his book, Radical Wholeness, if thinking was the way that we could find the answers, we should have them by now. <laughs> but it is, you know, his book is all about that opening up and connection to the field. So that's how we're innately connected. And that's where my work, The Awakening, is about. It's not giving you anything. You already have it. But it's just helping you access it and helping you realize what it is and being able to utilize that energy. And the energy in the field is so dense. Haramein postulates that if we could harness one cubic centimeter of the energy of the field and utilize it, extract the energy so we could use it as we use energy, we'd have energy for hundreds if not thousands of years in one cubic centimeter. And that is what his work is about in the Resonance Science Foundation. But that's the connection part. Then we step onto healing. And as I just described, we are the healers of ourselves. Whatever happens, we seem to accept that if we cut our hand or if we break our arm, anything like that, um, we can heal ourselves. But when anything gets a bit bigger, we've got into a mindset of, no, we can't cope. We need something outside. And I want to make it clear here, I am not a Luddite. I 100% support modern medicine. We learn everything for a reason, but it's what we do with it that matters. And I think we might have gone a little bit astray on some elements within the modern medicine. But we can mix and match. We don't have to do all of one thing and all of another. Use what's appropriate to you. But understand that you are the healer. You have the power to heal. There's many, many cases of spontaneous remission from cancer where people have been given a death sentence and they are literally within a couple of days of, their, of them dying, according to the doctors, and suddenly there's a turnaround. And it's not a random occasion. For me, this is something that should be looked at because we need to look at what is the change that is happening within that system at that moment that makes that happen. So you can heal yourself. Creation, my favorite. Intention, attention, no tension. Now, this is not my saying, okay? I learned this about 15 years ago, but it stuck with me and I've used it. And as Warwick well knows, you know, it's one of my favorites. So intention, know what you want. Write it down. Put it in as much detail as you want. I tend to put it away and just leave it be and just accept it's going to happen. But you can stick it on the fridge, do what you like. And then we come to attention. And this, again, is something that's been mentioned by many of the speakers. The attention bit is imagine what your intention is. So say you were looking for the perfect job and you found it and you applied for it. And then in your inbox was an email saying, you've got it. That feeling when you open that email of, yes, I've done it. The, the sort of the joy, the excitement, anticipation, whatever you want to say. To bring that intention forward, whenever you think about it, think about it as if it's already happened. Because you're putting frequency out into the universe where every potential exists. And when you put a positive emotion such as that, you are increasing the frequency, you're increasing the power of that. I always use gratitude, as we've spoken about, and Robin did the, the talk, this, the meditation this morning. Gratitude is one of the few emotions that occurs when something has already happened. So you're sending a message out into the field, I want this and it's already happened. You're increasing the chances of it happening. So that's how you can create. Find purpose. 
passion is the thing that really ignites your interest and you just, yes. And, you know, for many of us, I'm sure it's our horses. But then purpose is using the passion for good. It's doing something with it. And, you know, people think you've got to have this massive purpose. I want to be the CEO of a charity. I want to be a, um, a missionary. If that's what floats your boat, go do it. But for me, your passion and your purpose can be something that you like gardening. Go and be a gardener. Your passion becomes your purpose. Is that all that's left? Um, <laughs> keep talking, fool. Keep talking. So <laughs> it's um, finding your passion. And if you don't know your passion, use curiosity. OK? Step into curiosity. So that is your power to connect, to heal, to create, and to find passion. And the next thing you need to do is do it through the frequency of love. And yes, we've heard this before. Now, I grew up in the year of you know, hippie time, make love, not war. And I just say, nice work if you can get it. But we're not talking about that. <laughs> what we're talking about is the frequency of love, the power of love. If your car isn't running right, you're, you know, I'm not talking electric now. I'm talking the old internal combustion engine. You tune it up. You make it more efficient. And that's what using love as the um, power behind your intention and to heal is doing. You can use love at every single step of the, the st whatever you're doing. And I always say, if, once you link love in, just imagine your heart smiling. Just imagine, when I smile, I'm in love. And it makes it much easier. And the thing is, when you step into love, you bring amazing biochemical changes within your body. So you go from protection into growth and repair. And then you also make your head, your brain sort of thing, and your heart become coherent. So, and it opens you up. You go from sympathetic to parasympathetic. You're open to the universe. So imagine the power you have if you can connect the information and the wisdom of the universe through you and then put it to use with your head, with your brain. That's the sort of power of it all. Your unique magnificence is very simple. There's never been another you, there isn't another you, and there never will be another you. Even if you had identical twins, their experience as they go through life is different. They can never stand in exactly the same spot at exactly the same time and look at the same tree. Their experience is different, along with all, you know, whatever else happens. So you are unique and you are magnificent. You have to step into that. So my hope and... You know, what, the other thing that I need to mention is people have asked me if I can teach them what I do. And I really struggled because I thought, how can I do it? But I can't teach them to be me. So what I've realized is I can put a, together a set of tools which hopefully people can use to step into their own power and their own unique magnificence. And I run a course for Gateway to You. But it's there for the taking. You don't need me. I, you know, this is something you can do for yourself. So my hope and my prayer is that you will step into your power and you will realize how magnificent you are. Because I believe when you do that, you help the next person. And then if enough of us do that, we will reach a critical tipping point where we will step into a place where we will not only help mankind, but we will actually help heal the earth itself. Thank you.